Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at readings from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. Today is Thursday of the 28th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord said, Woe to you! You build the memorials of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them and you do the building. Therefore, the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles. Some of them they will kill and persecute in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building, Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law. You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you stopped those trying to enter. When he left, the scribes and Pharisees began to act with hostility toward him and to interrogate him about many things, for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is the third day in a row for a somewhat not uplifting gospel, but yet another challenging gospel. And it is, again, a part of that same confrontation that Jesus has with the scribes and Pharisees at this dinner where he had been invited to attend at the house of a Pharisee. And you may remember from yesterday, we were talking about all of the woes, the oh no's, this word oai in the, in the Hebrew or Greek rather, that, that meant uh, it's, it's a sign of a forthcoming, forthcoming judgment. It's, it's a sign of forewarning and of, of alas, this is, this is grievous. And he then went on to talk to the Pharisees about that. And then one of the scholars of the law challenged him and says, you're insulting us too. Well, that just opened up the opportunity for Jesus to talk about what the, what the scribes are doing, these scholars of the law. And here we talk about the fact that even though they build memorials to the prophets, the scriptures that they resp uh, respond to uh, bear witness to the fact that some of these prophets were killed. And he brings out, of course, uh, we have in the very beginning, the blood of Abel that was shed by Cain. And this was the first murder. And then we have the blood of Zechariah, the last recorded murder uh, in the prophets. And so these two are kind of like bookends for the whole drama that unfolded and the amount of violence that has taken place where people have rejected the word of God. And, and he's saying that this generation is going to be charged with that. Well, why is that? What's, what's this generation got that other generations don't? They have the Messiah. They have God the Son. And he's saying, pay attention, that everything that has happened in salvation history is culminating at this very moment as the Messiah has come into the world to redeem mankind, that that this has all come to this. And so this is the pinnacle generation in terms of awaiting in the old covenant what is coming in the new. And then he says this, he says, Woe to you, scholars of the law, you have taken away the key of knowledge. And here he's showing that throughout the entire Old Testament, that 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 Hebrew Bible that they had taught from as a part of their teaching office for the Jews, that Bible reveals the Messiah. It reveals the one who is to come. And they are denying the very revelation that's contained within the book that they teach. So he says, you've taken away the key. You haven't let people realize that there was this foretold. You're not even acknowledging it and you're not cooperating with what's happening in the redemption of the world. And not only have you taken away the key, you're not entering, but you're not allowing others either. And that really is the indictment, that they're not only restricting any entrance into the covenant relationship that God is establishing in the new covenant for themselves, but also 
for all of those under their care. Well, as you can imagine, after all of these woes, uh, the Pharisees and the scribes are really agitated. They are really upset. Jesus at this point leaves. It doesn't even say whether he had dinner. I doubt that he ate anything. It just seems like from the time he got there, he entered into this, this time of challenge. And when he left, then what they did is began to, of course, act with hostility toward him. How dare this guy say this and all that. And then they began to think about ways to interrogate him. Well, we ought to ask him about this. Let's ask him about that. Let's ask him about this. Let's try to. And so they began to hatch even more plots on try, how, to, how to try to trip up Jesus and his, uh, his ministry among the people of that time. So, again, this uh, whole chapter is really a, an amazing chapter, uh, especially the three-fourths of it was spent in challenging the, the ruling class of the Jews, the Pharisees and the scribes, and to really challenge them in terms of their own interior life, in terms of their actions, and in terms of what they are teaching to people. And it goes, again, to us today to make sure that we understand that the church needs to unlock for us the key of knowledge for the things of God. And that is the call and the sum and substance of the church's mission today is to unlock the key, with the key of knowledge, to unlock the treasure trove of good news found in the scriptures, found in the traditions of the church, found in the very life of the church, that we all might enter in and receive beautifully of the grace and the gifts that God has for us there. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, it's good to be with you today. And the Lord willing, we will be with you tomorrow for another installment of Day by Day. And one of the things that, uh, that I wanted to remind you is that today is a special memorial. And I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the broadcast, but I wanted to share it before we end. Today is uh, St. Teresa of Avila or St. Teresa of Jesus, one of the great saints of the church, the first woman doctor of the church. And we want to be sure to uh, take some time today to reflect upon her life. If you haven't read a short biography of St. Teresa of Avila, I would encourage you to do so, to look her up and to get uh, an idea of the way in which this one mighty woman of God changed the world and blessed the church. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>